Hi everyone, and welcome to part six in this series about securing fields in ServiceNow. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a brand new feature in the Tokyo release called data anonymization. Data anonymization is intended to secure or anonymize data that is cloned or copied over from your production instance to a non-production instance. When you're cloning instances in ServiceNow, you have certain control over what tables and what records in those tables are copied using data preservers and excluded data records. But what you don't have up until now is a way in which you can specify what fields are actually copied over. When you do a clone, the selected records in the selected tables are copied over without any exceptions. Now you may want to anonymize some of that data. Some of that data may be sensitive or may be personally identifiable. For example, if you copy users over to a non-production instance, you may want to exclude address data, phone numbers, etc. You may not need that data in your non-production instance. Moreover, it may not just be a question of what data you need, but what data you are permitted to have. There may be data privacy and laws that govern what data you're allowed to keep in certain locations. Data anonymization kind of sits between having read access to a field and not having read access to a field. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're a user that's been granted an access control rule that gives you read access to a field, you'll still be able to see that field, but the data that you see in that field will not be the original value. It will have been anonymized. In other words, the original value has been replaced either with asterisks or random characters or something else entirely. It's important to note that data anonymization is not data encryption. We're going to talk about data encryption in the next video. With data anonymization, we are actually replacing values of fields in the database itself. My intention with this video is simply to provide an overview of this feature. I strongly recommend that for all of you who want to learn more about data anonymization to take the course on it in now learning. Now there are four steps to anonymizing data. Step one, we have to create a data class. In other words, what kind of data are we dealing with? Is it personally identifiable data or are we dealing with secret codes for devices that need to be hidden? Step two, we need to classify certain fields according to that classification that we've created. Step three, we need to create a data privacy policy configuration. In other words, how are we going to anonymize that data? What method are we going to use for that? And fourth and lastly, we need to run a data privacy job. So without any further ado, let's get straight into an example. Okay, so for this example, we're going to use the same table that we've been using in previous videos, this cars table here. And in previous examples, we've been looking at ways in which we can secure, or maybe not so, uh, this field right here, the pin field. Okay, so I'm currently logged in as the cars user, and not only can I see this field, I can also change it. Okay, uh, and the same also applies to the cars admin user who has uh, the similar right to do that here. But let's just say that they are secret codes, they should only be viewable by certain users in the production instance of ServiceNow. No one in a non-production instance of ServiceNow needs to know these real codes. So we need to find a way to replace these values with something else, okay? So the first thing that we need to do is to create a data classification. So I'm gonna come over to another tab here and I'm gonna go under system security, data classification, go to data classes. You can see some of the ones here that have been provided by ServiceNow out of the box, personally identifiable information, privacy confidential, etc. Okay, I'm gonna create a custom data class here. So click on new here and we'll just call this one security codes or security code singular. Okay, let's say we just need a, a way to classify any data we've got in our instance as a security code, if it is in fact a security code. Okay, so I will put in a description, always best practice, security codes for vehicles. Okay, and save that. Okay, the next step is that we actually need to now classify that pin 
as a security code class. So the way in which we do that, we need to come to the dictionary entry, or the list actually, for these fields. And we search for that pin field. This is it right here. And now in the list context menu, there is an option there to classify that field. So I'll come here and select classify. And then specify that security code entry that we've just created. Okay, and click on classify. All right, so now that pin field has been classified as a security code field. All right. The next step now is to create a data privacy policy configuration. So let's come here to data privacy policy configuration. Now, what I have done already, what I haven't shown you is that I've elevated to certain roles in order to be able to see these modules here. Okay, so if you look at the training course in our learning on this, it goes through the different roles that are available uh, in this application, um, but I can already show you here, if I come to elevate role there, uh, there are various data privacy roles that you need to be able to do the configuration that I'm showing you here, okay? All right, so let's go to privacy policy configuration, and let's go ahead and create a new one. And we'll just call this one cars pin and now we can apply it to a specific data classification data class uh, the one that we created earlier so the security code which then as we've seen is now applying to the pin field but it could also just as well apply to other fields in our instance as well other security code other pin fields in other tables okay but at the moment we've only applied it to one field in one table okay all right i'm going to apply this to all records in that class, okay, in the class that we've defined here. Uh, if you leave this uh, unselected here, there is actually a way in which you can then select uh, specific users uh, that should, whose data should be anonymized, but we're not dealing with user data here, so we can just leave that. Uh, there is also an option to apply this configuration when you're cloning, okay, uh, but I'll leave that unchecked. All right, so I will go ahead and save this record. And after we do that, we can see what fields have been pulled according to that data class. At the moment, we only classified one field in one table uh, with the security code data class, and that is what appears here. Now, what we do need, and we get a message up here saying um, that this field or this uh, privacy configuration actually lacks... Uh, an associated anonymization technique. Okay, so you can see here in this related list, we've got this uh, empty uh, field value here for privacy technique configuration. Now this field here actually references another table. We can look at this quickly here, privacy technique configuration. These are the ones that ServiceNow provides out of the box, but you can create your own, um, but you've got some basic ones here, such as to remove uh, the field value entirely. Uh, to replace the value with uh, an asterisk or with some random characters, etc. All right, so let's go back. And I will just select the option to replace the string with asterisk. So I'll just come here to open the record. And I will provide... Uh, that selective replace with asterisk. Okay, so that's just going to replace all the characters in the pin with a series of asterisk. Okay, and update that. Okay, and now the final step is to create a data privacy job. So let's go ahead and do that and run it and let the system do its work. So I'll create a new record here. And we'll call this the same thing. Uh, cars pin. Oops. And anonymize all pins for all cars. <laughs> okay. And then we will specify that privacy configuration that we just came from. 
Uh, you can select dry, one, dry run rather uh, to see how many records will be affected uh, by this, uh, but I will deselect that. By the way, um, once you do run this, there is an option to roll back. Um, by default, uh, you've got the option to do that three days after you've run the data anonymization job. So if for some reason you want to roll back to the original values, uh, you can do that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select a, a time for this job to start. So at the moment, it's 1549 where I am. So I'll put in here 1550 and 1551 and save that. And then I'll just go ahead and schedule that job. Okay, so now you can see once that time uh, ticked over, um, we actually process the thousand rows. We have a thousand records uh, in that table, uh, so we get a little log entry here uh, of the fact that it's been completed. So let's test this out now. And we can see the pin values have been changed to asterisks now. And if I go to the cars user session here and do the same thing, Obviously, we're going to see the same anonymized values here as for the cars admin. And there we go. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, data anonymization is not the same as data encryption. Okay. These are not encrypted values. These are actually hard-coded values. These are the values that we actually see in the database. Okay. And we haven't changed any access control rules. So I had write access before. I've got write access now, which means I can actually come in here and change these values to something else. Okay, that will work. Okay, but it means now that those secret codes, those security codes from the production instance, once we've performed that clone onto a non-production instance, uh, we are no longer able to see those values. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you anonymize data. Now, if we go back to our admin session here and go back to that data privacy job, let me just refresh the form here. Now we've got the rollback option. Okay, as I said, by default, that's available for three days. You can change that, I think, uh, via a system property. Uh, but if I were to click on that, well, guess what's going to happen? We're going to roll back to those original values that we had that have been cloned over from our production instance. Okay, so if I come back now to the list and just refresh it, at the moment we've got a whole bunch of asterisks. But now we see the original values, except for that one that's been changed earlier. Okay, so just pay attention to that. Okay, everyone, so that is a short overview of data anonymization. Just a couple of notes before we wrap up. Remember, data anonymization is not a permanent state, as we just saw. They are run as individual jobs, and after the job has been completed, if the user still has right access to that field, well, guess what? They can change those values. Data anonymization is not the same as data encryption. Okay, so the values that we anonymized, or the new values that we have now, they are the values that exist in the database. So if you have flows and scripts and other processes going on in the background that are checking for those values uh, in the background, well, they're going to be checking those hard-coded anonymized values now instead of the original values. And as we just saw, we can roll back those changes. We have that option uh, for a few days after. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. Again, I just want to repeat that this is just a short overview. There is a course, an e-learning course on now learning that goes into a lot more detail in data anonymization. So I would strongly recommend that if you want to learn more about this feature, that you take that course. So stay tuned for the next video in this series where we will look at data encryption. So thanks for watching and see you next time.